Madam Speaker, <coughs> this sad public squabble between the Lee siblings is blown out of proportion. But it has embroiled all of us, it has tarnished the reputation of Singapore and distracted the government from far more important work. Because the allegations against PM have been made by members of the Lee family, they are given weight. The public is confused and concerned, even as Singaporeans continue to trust the PM and the government. There is thus an urgency to explain, restore trust and get back on track. It is our duty and responsibility to do this, to account to our voters. My main concern is neither the fate of 38 Oxley Road nor the family feud. They are far removed from the daily concerns of Singaporeans. It is the willful attack on the integrity of our leaders and the insidious erosion of public faith in our institutions that I want to address. The number of the issue for us in Parliament is integrity and trust in the Prime Minister and our system of government. Absent this, Singapore will descend to a third world country. Incorruptibility of our government is what distinguishes Singapore. The Prime Minister is central in upholding that incorruptibility. He holds the key levers of state power entrusted by the people. When trust in the Prime Minister disappears, his moral authority and political capital shrivel. Therefore, the constant self-policing, restraint and care of the Prime Minister in wielding the immense power at his disposal is paramount. There is no hiding from public scrutiny. One's entire character is laid bare and there is only total dedication to the job. This is the standard we want to uphold. My view remains that when a minister thinks that an allegation made against him is without basis, he has to sue. BM has explained in his speech why he would prefer not to sue. I can well understand his dilemma. Being the eldest in the family, he must harbour hopes of reconciliation, however remote it seems now, even at a cost to his own political standing. Indeed, I have urged him, as well as Lee Sen Yang, to sort out their differences, misunderstanding and reconcile. It is surely not worth the feud being passed on to the next generation. Given the immediacy of the issue, I commend PM for his courage in opening himself and his ministers to scrutiny in Parliament. Is the ministerial committee shrouded with secrecy? Uh, DPM Teo Chi Hien and the ministers, PM's puppets. You have listened to DPM Teo Chi Hien's explanation yesterday. I brought him into politics after he distinguished himself in the Singapore Navy. He stood with me in the 1992 by election in Marine Parade GRC. He went on to serve key appointments with distinction. Today, is Minister in Charge of the Civil Service and Coordinating Minister for National Security. To suggest that he would do PM's bidding blindly is to insult the Civil Service and Singapore Armed Forces, never mind the PAP and DPM. Many of the other ministers served under Lee Kuan Yew too, and they have stood up to him. Lee Kuan Yew told them that he wanted to have his house demolished after his death. They said no, they are not yes men. I have come to the conclusion that neither money nor the house is the real issue. The dispute over 38 Oxley Road is only a fig leaf, only a fig leaf for the deep cracks within the family, cracks which perhaps started decades ago. What then? 
its agenda of BM Securities. Are they whistleblowing in a noble effort to save Singapore or waging a personal vendetta without any care for the damage done to Singapore? I've kept my ears open from what Lee Sin Young and his wife are freely telling many people. It is clear that their goal is to bring Lee Sin Dung down as PM regardless of the huge collateral damage suffered by the government and Singaporeans. It is now no more a cynical parlour game. If the Lee siblings choose to squander the good name and legacy of Lee Kuan Yew and tear the relationship apart, it is tragic, but a private family affair. But if in the process of their self-destruction, they destroy Singapore too, that is the public affair. And substantiated accusations have been dished out on Facebook and the media ad nauseum. Singaporeans are getting sick and tired of all this. We cannot and will not allow ourselves to be manipulated as pawns. There must be a clear conclusion at the end of this debate. Either we clear PM over the allegation on his house or his abuse of power, or we censure him. I've heard PM's and DPM's statements. I've also been following closely the lengthy postings that Lee Sen Yang has shared online. I've heard the views and questions of MPs and paid close attention to those from the Workers' Party and the nominated MPs. I reaffirm my full confidence in the integrity of the Prime Minister. I've known and worked closely with him for more than 30 years I brought him into politics in 1984, and I should add, he was not a Lee Kuan Yew's behest. He was my Deputy Prime Minister for 14 years. He has been Prime Minister for some 13 years. In this episode, in fact, it is reviewed, or he has reviewed, his political sensitivity and integrity. He gave the proceeds from the sale of 38 Oxley Road away so that no one could accuse him that he would benefit should the government acquire the land. He had put country before self and family interest. I still keep a close eye on government matters. This is an occupational hazard for former prime ministers. On this case, PMs and DPMs accounts are caught with my knowledge of how the government and ministers operate. I'm also fully satisfied that DPM Tio acted independently as chairman of the ministerial committee. I met him in June 2016 to understand his thinking of a possible range of options for 38 Oxley Road. BM had recused himself a year earlier. I was trying to mediate between him and Lee Sin Yang, that is BM and Lee Sin Yang. I conveyed DPM's thinking to Sen Yang on 23rd June last year. I told Sen Yang that the dispute over the demolition of the house was actually between him and the government. He was not with Sen Lung, as PM has no say over the fate of the house. I emphasize this point to him, between him and the government. I agree with Lo Tia Kiang that we should end this sad saga and move on. But how, he asked. I will tell him how. I've stated clearly my position on the integrity of the PM and the government. As Prime Minister, I investigated Lee Kuan Yew and Lee Sen Lung in 1996 over the purchase of apartment units in Nassim Jade. My judgment and integ integrity were well, stick then, as today, when I state my conclusion on the PM's character and integrity. After so much has been said by both sides and the government, it is clear that the allegations are baseless. There's enough distortion out there. I invite Lo Tia Kiang and his Workers' Party's MPs 
as well as the NMPs, to also state their position clearly on PMs and the government's integrity. Lo Tia Kiang said in the speech that, I quote, Mr. Lee Sen Yang and Dr. Liu Wei Ling should not make vague allegations in the public domain against the Prime Minister based on scattered evidence centred on family displeasure. Making allegations that appear to be calculated to undermine the Prime Minister's authority does not make for constructive politics. Unquote. Well said. Follow up with a clear statement of your own that you have come to the conclusion that the allegations are baseless and calculated. His colleague Peng Eng Huat read out quotes from Wei Ling's and Xiang Yang's 14th June Facebook statement. Anyone can simply read that is akin to spreading rumour. As an honourable member of parliament, he should state his position on what he has read. That is what we are elected as MPs for, to have a clear view on issues. In 1996, at the end of the debate on Nassim Jade, Lo Tia Kiang and Cham Si Tong stated their positions unambiguously. Lastly, if reason fails, I appeal to the emotions and sensibility of the Lees to stop trying to drag each other down and move on. Stop your family quarrel, sort out any misunderstandings and reconcile. And if that is not immediately possible, at least stop making things worse. Keep the quarrel private and seek mediation or arbitration to resolve your differences. No one doubts your deep filial piety. Sen Lung is here. I hope Wei Ling, Sen Yang outside would hear me. Your parents were proud of you. This is what your father said during the debate on the Nassim Jade episode. The proudest thing for your mother are her three children, upright, well-behaved, and honorable. They are brought up straight. They are likely to stay straight. It is like, as I've said, a coat of honor. If you break that coat, you have brought shame upon yourself and family. <laughs>